changes depending on what the sun's doing and everything. And we don't even know if we're looking at light. It could be bending around from somewhere else. Hey John, in, in the, uh, is the radiant energy in the spike, or is, is that... What happens is, you see the current pulse, right? Before the current pulse comes up, all the energy that's surrounding the coil is like pointing in all different directions, and it's, it's scattered. You can't use it because you have nothing to collect it or to organize it, right? So you walk around in it all day long and you don't know anything. Now your body organizes it because you you put out less than 100 watts of power. So how do you do all the physical work if you can only put out 100 watts of power? How could you sit out there and push that lawnmower all day long for a little drop of water, right? Figure that out, right? So all this energy is already scattered and it's like little arrows pointing every different direction around the machine. And so the what the idea is is you have to imagine you have to imagine cones reaching outward from the side. In other words, cones that look like this. Into the blotch wall. Okay, right. The blotch wall is when the coil is energized, the blotch wall compresses. And you get a permanent magnet, right? That's the way all permanent magnets are. Now, if you can tickle the blotch wall or you can do something with the blotch wall or you can make the blotch wall pump, you can collect all that, but most people throw that away or short it out with diodes. They say, hey, it burned down my circuit. We don't need hey, that. John, there's a mic if you want to use it. No, I don't want to use no mic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so what you want to do is you want this compression. So you want the compression, but you want it in you want it in threes on this one. So is your pulse switch completely turning off and on or are you it's right here. It's completely turning off and on. So what's happening is when that timing wheel comes around over there on the other side, it's got a certain arc to it, and the hole is sensing the arc, and it's running a bipolar switch in here, which is isolated from the negative and the positive, which means it's free from anything that's happening with the switch. No back EMF or anything like that can get back to, to the battery or the circuit to slow the machine down. Now, the interferometry that you mentioned before, maybe you've talked about that. that but you right? interrupted me. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jumping. <laughs> it's me. This, this guy asked, and so I'm telling you. You pump the, you just compress and let loose, exhaust. You compress and exhaust with the magnetic field. And then what you do is when it does that, when it exhausts, you make sure that you have a collection point to get the energy. And that's all the energy that's wasted in the system. But you see three different coils. You see they're all parallel together. That's a tuning aspect of the machine. So that there's a delay between that coil, this coil, and this coil. They're at different impedances. So it's more than what everybody suspects is going on here. Is there any way we could stop it so that we could get pictures of the exact magnet positions compared to the coils? Because I know you got a machine in there that you'll be able to do all that. With. Okay, well that's fine. Too. It's an exact machine. It's a model. It's made from wood <laughs> to show you that you don't need metal. So that was. And if you want to go out there and cut a stone, I'll make it spin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what you hand me. I'll still collect the energy. Why is there two types of uh, magnet here? There's one? Uh, two types of magnet here. Instead oh, of one, is showing you, one is showing you the spin. You want to stop it? Yeah. Just let it stop. Doesn't care, and you can see now by stopping it. Okay, there is your battery, and there is your other battery, the ones that's been running. Now, if 
the crew wants to swap these two batteries, they can do that at any time. I'm not swapping them. I already know. And I haven't used any energy doing all this BS with you. <laughs> right? How long? Not long because because if you look at the amount of microfarads that are on the capacitor and you do the formula, you find out that it's dumping, you know, hundreds of joules every every three times a second, right? So that's like taking the battery and taking a hammer and going. Sixteen hundred to uh, sixteen thousand micro Hundreds of joules, twenty times a second. Well, calculated over. It's about. It's running up to eighty-five volts in the capacitor, and the comparator circuit is looking at it, right, and saying, "I don't want the capacitor up here. I want the capacitor close to the battery." And so when I reach this after, and you'll be able to witness this in there, on the scope, because there'll be a scope on the stage, and, and I'll put the probe anywhere you want. I'm not questioning, I'm just, that's, that's no. quite a bit. No, because what happened last year was nobody really understood the machine. And everybody asks these questions, and everybody's diverse. They do whatever they do, they think about things. But to do work with something like this, or energies like this, you cannot go to the textbook, because if you're going to the textbook, you're going to lose. And I'm not the only one that knows this. Black government projects know this. Everybody knows this in that community. So they're laughing at you right now, because they know that you got some stupid little Dick and Jane book that you're going to follow by. And that's why you don't have it. This stuff is known since the early 20s. This stuff is known since the early 20s. Let me verify this. You did say 85 volts is what you're talking about. Yeah, it's, it's capable of going up to 85 volts if the comparator says, I need that much to dump. What is but it's not going to do that because it's going to look at what the condition of this battery is and it's going to look at that capacitor and it's going to say oh wait a minute this is a 36 volt battery right i need to be at like 50 volts and then dump so so what's your comparator difference <laughs> the comparator difference you're going to see in there okay. is far more different than your normal comparator because it's not only a comparator it's a voltage sensing device and it's a stair stepping unit and a set of it's an optical mosfet i guess what my original question mm. was was a uh, how many volts above the battery double 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 okay. you always double the voltage above a battery or you're never going to get it charged okay.